been watching the weather reports for the last few days and we've been a little dry here although the garden is so deeply mulched and the plants are at such high density for the most part it's a non-issue seedlings are having a little trouble but I'm getting away from myself here uh, tomorrow night, Sunday night uh, starting around midnight and then going all the way through the day on Monday it's looking like we're supposed to get upwards to two inches in a 24-hour window and so I thought knowing that in advance that I would come into the garden and try to make some finishing touches on a pond that I started two years ago held water pretty well certainly through the winter and after every rain it fills up so it's a really great silt catch uh, but I'd like to make it a little bit more stable and long-lasting so I'm trying to get that done before the rains start tomorrow let me take a look in detail so here we are in our 0.1 acre huge production garden. I made a video of this a few years ago. I'm going to do an update, a uh, more thorough garden tour of this sooner than later. I think we'll get past this rain and then I'll do so. But uh, as I pan across here, I'm starting to look more northbound. The elders are on the northern side of this garden. And this pond area is the northeast corner of this particular garden. And it's part of a split watershed that I've been um, shaving and re refining and adding to over the last two or three years based on feedback from the system. You can see it's a relatively straight ditch that allows water from upslope to skirt around the bulk of the garden uh, since we are such a wet site by default. And instead of just shunting it out of the landscape, as I've mentioned in lots of videos, uh, slow it, spread it, sink it. In this case, we need to get it out of the garden and once we're in the northeast corner, I want to hold it for as long as I can in this water feature. Now we've got quite clay soil, but in an interesting scenario. It's rich for the first couple of inches, down six to eight inches. You can see a nice thick black vein of soil there. Transitions over to a very solid clay, but then what I've learned is that you go a little bit deeper and it hits some pretty large aggregate stone, uh, baseball to softball size. So. If I were to dig this much deeper than this, I would lose that retention from the clay. And so what I've done is dug down, got it to around that stone layer, and I'm trying to muck it up with a whole bunch of clay. After this rain, which I suspect will completely fill this, I'll actually follow up with sodium bentonite. Um, been doing enough research on it, feels like a reasonable addition to help seal ponds. And with that amount of water and a little bit of working into the sidewalls, that should make a more per uh, permanent water holding feature, and we'll see if that works. What I've done in this case is taken this trench, which used to send water directly into the pond, which also means that when it's really running, it's sending soil into the pond, and I actually cut down on this pathway so that the incoming water We'll see, I've done this by eye, but we'll see how it actually works. Cut down through here, so the water would rush through if it's running real hard. Pardon my swing. And come around, deposit silt, slow down, get interrupted a lot as it goes. Hook around, here's a production bed berm, so that's kind of like a swale to soak up some water. and then as it comes around hit a berm of soil and with all that energy lost and all that silt hopefully deposited bleed down onto this low side of the pond and allow the pond to fill up from the back end and I've dug down so that if there's a really intense rain it can skirt around here as a little silt catch but I'm not just dumping it straight into the water now I use the shovel to expand the overall space of the pond and make a deeper space in the middle, some shallows on the side, mainly because I'm interested in really starting to up our water lotus, American water lotus production. I've got a bunch in pots that need to find a permanent home. And so all with a shovel, which takes some time, but it all doesn't have to happen in one day. Uh, this is getting done. I went through and dug out most of the perennial weeds to build a hugel mound near this. I have to get this seeded out to a really intense fast cover crop soon. I'm going to get that probably to radishes. You can see a little vole. I must have excavated a home for a vole. Hopefully it'll figure out something. Anyway, uh, one area where I left weeds 
this is, just next to this apple tree, this tuft of grass, is where overflow from the pond heads northbound and eventually goes through a drainage tube around behind our outdoor kitchen and finally to the north of that fence is where our chicken yard is and I very intentionally left this grass for now so that this pond can fill up and if there is any silt or nutrient that wants to leave it'll get caught in this grass after the rain and it settles and the water's not flowing as quickly I can harvest the grass out and then figure out how to seed this out to another thing. So it's basically leaving a filter in place. Let me look at this from another angle. So here I am looking at it from the uh, west side. So I'm looking east, that's to the north. The overflow is there. Again, the water is now designed to run along this pathway, scoop and come into it from the back end, hopefully as a great way to filter out material and silt the overflow on that side and a whole bunch more edge and ecosystem context. And so I'm leaving it here in this video, relatively short, six minutes or something. Um, and what I'll do is on Tuesday, if it uh, or sometime in the week, if it rains as much as it's supposed to, this will be absolutely full and we'll revisit how this looked, how the silt flow and backplane stuff worked out whether or not it held, and then what the sodium bentonite treatment will look like to get this to really hold uh, onward. So there's our hand dug, one of the many, many hand dug ponds um, there to go. Lots of raised beds, tons of rich soil all around. These are elderberry cuttings that I took last year. Those will get dug out in the fall too. It's always ever evolving. Thanks for watching.